streams in the desert. They, uh, Yum. Chocolate in my coffee. <laughs> you got peanut butter in my chocolate. The <clears throat> interesting thing about weather is that we may have times where we predict the weather and we say, oh, it's going to be hot today, or it's going to be cold, or the sun's going to shine, or it's going to be cloud cover. And we make a prediction that sometimes comes true. It's interesting is that today was supposed to be a hot day and they had predicted weeks in advance and then days in advance and even yesterday that it would become hot and then you notice that all of a sudden there's this ocean breeze that comes in off the ocean and it kind of goes farther than what they expected and then suddenly it's not as hot as they thought because the wind came up and brought a cooling breeze. God, we're told, controls the wind. People like to look at the book of Revelation and they're able to determine that God sent an angel to cover the north wind or he calls it by name and it's able to blow and we know from Song of Solomon that God calls the wind and he can cause it to cease or to happen. So, while we may have ideas about what we think is the weather, only God can control it, and only God knows. So, when you have someone like the living God in your life, he can control the circumstances and the situations that change your day to make it better or worse, dependent upon how you are going to operate. Are you going to be in rebellion to God? Or are you going to be in obedience to Him? You see, there's really no choice. You're one or the other. And only a foolish man would want to be in rebellion of God who can control the weather, much less your life. In Streams in the Desert, He guided them by the skillfulness of His hands. Psalm 78, 72. When you are doubtful as to your course, submit your judgment absolutely to the Spirit of God and ask Him to shut against you every door but the right one. Meanwhile, keep on just as you are and consider the absence of indication to be the indication of God's will that you are on track, on His track. As you go down the long corridor, you will find that He has preceded you and locked many doors which you would not have normally have entered. But be sure that beyond these there is one which he has left unlocked. Try it and see. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be opened. For everyone that asks receives and he that knocks it shall be opened. Open it, the door, and enter and you will find yourself face to face with a bend of the river of opportunity broader and deeper than anything you had dared to imagine on your sunniest dreams. Launch forth upon it. It conducts to the open sea, as a river will run off into the sea. God guides us, sometimes by circumstances. At one moment the way may seem utterly blocked. And then shortly afterwards, some trivial incident occurs, or even time, <clears throat> which might not seem much to others, but which to the keen eye of faith speaks volumes. Sometimes these things are repeated in various ways. In answer to prayer, God wanting to see if you would seek Him and walk with Him. They are not haphazard results of chance, but the opening up of <coughs> but the opening up of circumstances in the direction in which we should walk. And they begin to multiply or snowball as we advance toward our goal, just as the lights do as we go closer towards a populous city. When darting at, if you go to God to be guided, he will guide you. But he will not comfort your distrust or half-trust of him by showing you the chart of all his purposes or plans concerning you. He will not tell you all the days ahead of which way he will choose for you to go. You must seek him daily. 
He will show, show you only into a way where, if you go cheerfully and trustfully forward, he will show you on still farther. He will take you step by step, day by day, moment by moment, and conversation by conversation as he leads you along his way and not your way. The simplest thing to say is to ask God to lead you each and every day and then check with him throughout your day to determine if you're in the way that he would want you to go or if you're in his way because he wants you to get out of the way so he can do something for that day that you should experience his will, his power, his love, and why we call him the way. That's how Jesus leads. Is he leading you?